Here we can see at a technical level, we can see the serratus posterior superior muscle and the rhomboid muscle being held up off of it. However, what we're looking at would function between any of the muscles of the body as we go down and look at the intermuscular fascia, which has been exposed as we lift one muscle up another. This kind of omnidirectional bubbly web is available between any of the muscles that you care to take apart and is a, a portion of fascia that is not widely described. The omnidirectionality and the cottony appearance that you see here of the perifascial layers between uh, the two muscles are coming into being as membranes and as a spider web of fibers going in every direction, every direction. We call this omnidirectional fascia because we can see as we change the forces coming up by lifting one muscle with the hemostat, we can see the fibers change their direction to match the forces that are being put on it. We should understand that when these muscles are laid down one on top of each other in vivo in the body, that this is much more of a gel without the formed fibers. The fibers are being formed, are being pulled into their direction and being by the fact that the muscles are being mechanically taken apart from each other. This intermuscular fascia has been largely ignored in anatomies to this point and uh, is the site of, for one, the passage of nerves and arteries, and two, as this fascia gets um, adhered, densified, uh, stuck from one layer to the other, it can interfere with that physiology, but it can also interfere with the motion. So we are going to do with uh, a scalpel what can be done with um, the motion of the body, the yoga, uh, stretching, uh, physiotherapy, um, and obviously <laughs> surgical procedures to open this fascia. This picture without this intermuscular fascia is what we often see in the anatomy books because this fascia has to be destroyed to, or at least parted, uh, in order to see the fascia on one side and the other. But we should understand that in function, in movement, in the daily um, dialogue between stability and mobility, that this intermuscular fascia is an underserved area that needs to be in the minds of therapists everywhere. Lifting up the edge of the rhomboids, we can see this intermuscular fascia allowing a lot of movement between the rhomboids and the tissue underneath. If this tissue gets densified, if it gets scarred, uh, if it isn't sufficiently hydrated, then movement between the two muscles is curtailed and the possibility of injury occurs with very fast movement. This cotton all over the body either allows or disallows the stability and movements we need in our everyday life.